Hey everyone, welcome back to Peaky Blue Natalie, or welcome to Kit Renew. Today's video, I've actually, I've kind of done videos on this recently, but it's a little different, and hopefully that's not too loud, I don't know, but it's basically just another feeding video, but I wanted to do kind of an update on this yard over here, and just show you how they're doing, what they look like, if they've built up at all, because I did a video Kind of just moving them over into 10 frames, feeding them, building them up for winter because this time of the year is when we're doing that. I've been giving a few talks every now and then and most of the talks that I'm getting, um, giving out right now are pretty much just fall and winter preparation. And I'm gonna kind of do that today a little bit also and just talk about that and why it's important for this. But we're gonna go ahead and feed today. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and do maybe a small hive inspection just to see that one got my hair. <laughs> Just to see how they're doing and put this veil on. I want to see if they've kind of built up. Now, I do know that the last time that we were here, from the very original time we put them in here, they have built up quite a bit. And although they all are singles, I don't know if they're going to be put into doubles before winter. If not, that's probably going to be okay. We overwinter nukes, actually, and they usually do fine. So as long as they've got plenty of bees in here, they're compact, they don't have all this extra space, they should be good. A lot of people want to put, have double deeps going into winter, and that's always like the best way to go into winter. But one of the things about that is sometimes you're giving them too much space that they can't handle. And if I add... So that's a good bit of bees right here, actually. And I, it was probably about a week or two ago that we came over and fed them with pollen sub and some syrup. So it looks like they have it drained and their pollen sub is all gone. So we're going to do that again today. And this is probably our, I don't know, third or fourth time probably doing this, maybe fourth. And they've built up quite a bit. Now we've also done, I believe it's just one round so far, of Apivar strips. Now I have talked about Apivar and how it's not my all-time favorite and how I'm not sure if it works as good. But the last couple years, it's kind of made a comeback. So we're kind of going back to it a little bit and decided to try it out on this yard. We've been doing Ape Guard, but on this yard, we just tried to just decided to try out some Apivar strips. So there's two of those in here. We'll do a couple of rounds of that. But I'm just curious to see what they look like inside here. Now, this is all food. It's still a little dry on one side, so we'll continue to feed there. And then she'll be slowing down here, and there won't be like a crazy pattern anymore. But I am just curious to see if she's still laying and everything. So it looks like she is. There's a solid amount of eggs in there. And then this next frame here has that Apivar strip on it. This is why I love Apivar, is because it just slides into the frames there, and then you're done. So, I believe my dad came over and did that, because he's useful for at least a little something. So he did that. So it's just a strip there, and... There. Yeah. Good amount of pollen in here. They're still bringing in a small amount of pollen. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Some people, there's a little bit of a debate um, if you should be feeding pollen sub now. I would say, personally, for our hives, we're going to go ahead and continue to feed pollen sub just because it's really hard to overfeed and it's really easy to underfeed. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue to feed them with pollen sub, and there's just not much out there for them right now. I always tell people this here in Northwest Missouri, we never, we never really uh, count on our fall flow just because it's never reliable sometimes we get it and sometimes we don't so we just don't count on it but today I'm gonna go ahead and feed these girls they look so much better these ones are basically we kind of dedicated this yard to our not crappy ones but not our best nukes so we made all of our splits earlier this year in springtime and then sold all of the ones you know all of our good ones and then Basically, any of the ones that were left that just didn't do very well, they didn't build up, maybe they didn't get a laying queen fast enough, whatever happened, that's these hives. And they've all kind of had a comeback, which just shows how much combining and requeening and feeding can do. 
that's what we did to these ones. We combined a couple of those nukes. Some of them, if there's like two frames of bees in there or they're just not really building up, if you go ahead and combine them together into a single or into a, like another nuke and just make one big strong nuke, sometimes that just gives them a little bit of a boost. And also just a little bit of feed can help them kind of get up and going a little bit too. So that's why we're continuing to feed them here. But I'm not gonna take this apivar out yet. I'm gonna go ahead and feed them now. I believe one of the nice things about these is whenever you start with all of them at the same spot, they grow at the same rate. So now this whole yard, so this one, okay. So yeah, this one's a little bit slower, but you can see they haven't eaten their whole pollen patty yet, but they have drained their syrup. So I'll go ahead and give them some more syrup here. It looks like they're still working on it a little bit, but because they're not really touching it, Oh, you know what? I don't think he took the plastic off the bottom. Well, that's his fault. Okay. So it looks like they did eat some of this right here. So they're still working on it a little bit. But because they're not really touching it a whole lot, and it doesn't look like there's active on these outside frames, I'll go ahead and do a quick hive inspection on them just to see what's going on. This time of year is when we're doing those full hive inspections to see how they're looking, what they need before winter, because it's going to be here before we knew it. Knew it? Before we know it. So we're doing those full hive inspections currently, and I like it, honestly, because we haven't really been able to do that all the summer long. I've been telling people that a lot of the times when, if I can get this open, <laughs> a lot of the times when we put those supers on for the year, they don't come off till like a couple months later, which means I don't get to get into the hives until around now. So it's nice to be able to get into the hives now. Jeez. I think my dad taped this, so that would explain it. Okay. Now, with these strong ones that are building up a lot, like this one here, I'm going to go ahead and give them a full patty because they can handle it. Now, typically you might think, well, if they're weaker, wouldn't they want more? Which would kind of make sense, but they won't be able to handle it and take care of it and it'll just start to go bad and you'll get beetles and everything. Same way, if you give them too much space at once and they can't handle it, they won't be able to take care of it and they'll start to get other things in there that will kill them, so. With these pollen patties, I just peel one side and then I lay it flat onto the frames. So it just gives them direct contact to the pollen patty. They can start working on it immediately. And then with these, lids here there's a slight feeder shim on them so it's not gonna smash it or anything most pollen patties are pretty thin you don't have to worry about it even on just like normal inner covers you don't have to worry about adding a feeder shim because they're not usually that thick so then we're going to feed them some syrup here now i would recommend usually if you can find like a watering can use that <laughs> to pour your syrup makes it a whole lot easier but somebody lost ours so I have no idea where it went make it a little bit easier for me because I'm just a girl um, I'm kidding I pour it like usually this is like a full bucket and I pour half of it into one that way it's just a little bit easier to pour it over and then I just use this to put into the feeders here the pouring from a bucket is dumb and I don't recommend it but it's all we've got. So I'm gonna go about halfway. Actually closer to full. Because um, I just wanna make sure that they have plenty. And my dad also told me to not come back with any syrup, so that's why we're gonna feed quite a bit. Another thing that is just a small tip that we learned the hard way over the last couple of years is if you have any type of extra space or just anything like to where the feeders aren't smushed together here. So like if you want to come closer and kind of show this, if I had one extra frame that was pulled out and this feeder shim was just kind of open, what I would recommend doing is pulling your frames all the way over to your feeder shim. So what happens is it kind of smushes that feeder shim in like this. Now, because if there's no space for it to, like if there's space for it to kind of pull out, it's going to start to go like, outwards I don't think that's bowing I think that's wood <laughs> but 
basically it'll start to just like open up more and more and then your feeders are going to be like this thick the top of it we have so many feeders that are ruined because of it and it makes it so much harder to put them into these hives so just having your frames pushed together to where it can't bow out like that i would just recommend that just because once you put that syrup in there it starts to kind of open up that's the only thing about these frame feeders now you will notice that we have bucket lids on and we probably will feed buckets later in the year once it gets a little bit colder outside because they don't tend to take the feeder shims really well when it's cold out i don't know why that is oh yeah so then another thing this is actually already in the syrup so the syrup was mixed and made today and this was put in there so this is hive alive and this is what it looks like i'll put the link in the description if you want to check it out a bunch of places sell it you can get it at almost any conference most of the time a lot of people have it and basically it just really helps out the bees and it has thymol in it which is really great for the bees which is basically kind of like apigard and it just helps them out with their gut health and everything and i've really noticed a difference after using this there's some syrups out there that people will talk about that maybe aren't super great i don't remember i think it's high fructose corn syrup i believe we tried that one year and it really did it work yes and did it build them up yes it definitely did but we also had a lot of other problems um, just with their gut health. It doesn't do very, it's not very good for them. So I don't really recommend it, but if it works, it works. And we have had to use it whenever we're desperate. So, but if you're gonna do it, I would recommend at least adding a little bit of Hive Alive into it. Hive Alive has a lot of good pro products. They have fondant patties that we've also been using. And I've done some videos on that. We have a whole stack of them we'll probably use this year. They're just, they work really good. So anything from Hive Alive is usually really good and I would recommend it typically, but that's what's already in this syrup here. Another thing um, I'm gonna do really hard not to spill anything because this time of the year, if anything gets spilled, whether that's in the entrance, like if I spill it and it goes all the way down through the hive and out through the entrance, that's gonna cause a lot of robbing. So I wanna make sure that I'm trying not to spill or anything because these hives aren't crazy strong that they can protect themselves too much. So we're gonna try not to let that happen. And I'm gonna see if my smoker is still going. That's about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do that and just go through them, make sure the queen's just still in there laying. I can see like one egg and then I'll call it good. And then any of them that maybe don't look so good, I'll definitely go through those and figure out what they need before winter and get them ready for that. But this is pretty much all we're doing this time of year is just feeding and treating. That's all we're doing, just over and over and over again until probably springtime. But I think that's about it. So thanks for watching today's video. Follow along for more bee adventures and be here next time on Beekeeper with Natalie.